Welcome to Living Well. We're so happy that you joined us today to learn more about how to care for your mind, body, and spirit, not only here, but as you prepare for eternity. Today, we have a very special guest, Brother Perez, who will be sharing about his journey of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but life is a journey of faith. Every single day, our faith may be tested. And so he's going to share with us today about how he, on his journey of faith, put his complete total trust in God and how he relied on God to see him through. Amen. I want to remind you that the presentation today is for educational purposes only. We do not assess, diagnose, or treat anyone. And if you have any health concerns, we ask that you refer to your provider, your physician, um, about those specific concerns that you may have. But I would encourage you to grab a pencil, paper, something to write on so that you can take notes about how he did those different hurdles during his journey of faith. We know there must have been road signs along the way, detours along the way, but he continued on the journey and he's here today to share his journey of faith. Welcome, Brother Perez. We're so happy that you are here with us today on Living Well. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Yes, thank you so much. And I just like to thank Dr. Jennifer Stan Sankey for giving me the opportunity to be on your podcast and to share my testimony, which I have titled, A Journey of Faith. So as you know, I'm very passionate about health and wellness, and I have seen firsthand just by making a few small changes that can make a huge impact in our health and our overall health. So I'm just so thankful that um, I've been given this knowledge and I'm able to share it with you guys today. So I I'm a 12 year cancer survivor, uh, diagnosed in 2012. And um, my original diagnosis was stage four lymphoblastic lymphoma. And um, the doctor said it was a very aggressive tumor. It was about 12 by six centimeter mass in my chest. And I had no prior symptoms other than that same morning, I was a little bit short of breath. And I, I ironically, I was the manager at the cancer center where I worked. And uh, when I went into work early that morning, I told the physician that I worked for that I was a little bit winded because I used to drive an hour from Orlando to Ormond Beach in Florida. And he says, well, that's really unusual for a young man like yourself to be so out of breath. He said, if you don't mind, let me do an examination on you before we get started. So he put me in the exam room and put the stethoscope and had me take a deep breath on my right lung so I took in a deep breath and then he did the same thing on my left side, put the stethoscope and he said, like you've taken a deep breath. So I did. He said, are you taking in a deep breath? I said, I am. I most certainly am. He says, well, I'm really concerned because I'm not hearing any air exchange on your left side. He goes, that really concerns me. So I want to do a CAT scan of you right now. So in that moment, I went from being a caregiver in my employment to becoming the patient in my own department. So if you can just wrap your head around that dynamic. <laughs> so they, they put me on the CT table and they did a scan. And then um, I had a feeling something was wrong because the tech and the doctor were pointing at the monitor and they were saying, um, they were saying something to each other. So they brought me over and they said, Rick, what do you see on the screen? And I said, well, I'm very comfortable with my cross-sexual anatomy because I've been in the field of oncology for over 25 years at the time. I said, um, that that's, um, mass in the center is my heart shadow and those are my lungs and those are my ribs. He says, wrong. That mass you see in the center is actually a tumor and it is in the mediastinal space between your lungs and your left lung is completely filled with fluid and this is why you're having trouble breathing. So you can imagine at that point that my eyes got really big <laughs> And I was kind of shocked, in a state of shock that uh, something was wrong with me because I went into work like it was a normal day. So um, they did, a, uh, they got me in right away because I worked at the hospital, which was another uh, godsend at the time. And he made a few phone calls and got me an appointment with interventional radiology that afternoon. And um, normally uh, in my department at the time, I used to be the person who would do the daily huddle 
which is a time that we have first thing in the morning, about 10 minutes, where we would, we would pray together with my staff. And we would kind of just go over the, the clinical duties of the day with the patients. And um, when I told my director and my staff what was going on, he said to meet him in the chapel in, in 15 minutes. So I took the opportunity to go to my office. He said, just clear your schedule and meet us in the chapel in 15 minutes. So I called the three most important people in my life at the time, which was my wife, my parents, and my brother. So when I called my wife, um, she was a school teacher and she, and she knows it, it's, it must be an emergency because I never call during the day because I know she's in class. So um, she picked up the phone right away and she's like, what's wrong? And I, I told her briefly what had happened. And she said, do you want me to come there and be with you? I said, no, I, I was kind of afraid that she would get into a car accident on the way um, to where I work. So I told her, no, I'll be okay. I feel fine. So then I called my parents and uh, I told them as well. And my dad's reaction was, oh no, not again. And the reason he said that is because my only brother, my younger brother was diagnosed with a brain tumor just six months earlier than myself. So you can imagine their reaction when now both of their sons have terminal cancer. And then the, the last person that I talked to was my brother. So I called him and it's an hour earlier in Chicago, but they picked up right away. And his reaction really surprised me even to this day. And he says, Rick, what you're experiencing may be physical, but it's a spiritual battle that we're facing. And he was in the midst of it. He had just had brain surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. And he says that we're going to pray for you right now. And that just gave me such a sense of peace right from the beginning. So after I made my three phone calls, I went back to the hallway and I noticed that everybody was gone. I'm like, oh, I remembered <laughs> that they told me to meet them in the chapel. So I went there and much to my surprise, there was my entire staff in the chapel and they had made a circle and they put a chair in the middle and they said, Rick, every morning you minister to us and you uplift our spirits and you pray with us but now you're in a time of need and we want to make the circle around you to lay hands on you and to pray for you that God will intervene in this circumstance. And that just made me feel so comforted to know that my staff was willing to do that for me and to go out on a limb. And they prayed the most beautiful prayer. Everyone took turns praying and that kind of set the tone for my journey of faith because right from the beginning, I felt a warm sensation from the top of my head all the way down to the tips of my toes. And I know that was God speaking to my heart that everything was going to be okay. So um, I had asked the doctor after I received the diagnosis, um, what are the chances if I don't do anything? And he says, it's very aggressive. So if you don't do anything, you have about three to six months to live. So that was quite um, an eye opener as well. I was only 47 years old at the time. Um, just a little bit background about myself. I've been married now for 37 years. Uh, we just celebrated our anniversary last weekend. We had a wonderful dinner party and um, my daughter got to be with us. My daughter's also recently married. She celebrated her one year anniversary and I grew up in the church and we actually, my wife and I met when we were in Sabbath school in junior's class when I was 10 years old. <laughs> so we go way back together and uh, our vows were truly tested over time, especially the last 12 years. When you say in sickness, in health, for better, for worse, for richer or for poorer, we went through all of that and more. So I'm just so grateful to God that we've come out on the other side and I'm able to testify to all of you listening today how powerful God is and how powerful prayer is when we put our total faith and trust in God. So one, one, one quick little story I want to share with you was um, on, on the weekend that I was diagnosed, I was very downcast and I was um, feeling defeated. And I, I told my wife, I said, I really don't feel like going to church tomorrow. And she said, absolutely not. She goes, when you feel this way, this is when we have to go to church because we need to pray and we need to get our church family around us to rally around us and to lift you up in prayer before God. So she convinced me to go. <laughs> and I just told the pastor that if I could have just a few moments to let the congregation know what, my, what had happened and what my diagnosis was. 
So he gave me the opportunity. And that particular Sabbath, we had a um, guest choir come. It was about over 60 people. And they were on the stage behind us getting ready to perform. So mind you, this is happening right in front of the choir loft. So um, the pastor had a special prayer and all the elders and deacons came and they prayed over me. And then um, it was very emotional because we're praying for healing. And many of the people, uh, this is the first time for them to hear my diagnosis. And we're very close to our church family. We had been there since my daughter was two years old. So they've seen her grow up. And, you know, it was just, we felt like they were family. So you can just imagine there was people crying and it's just very, very, uh, it's a moment we'll never forget. So just to fast forward, uh, a week later, I get admitted to the hospital and they had me there um, as an inpatient because they were gonna give me um, four types of chemo at one time. And then they were gonna have me as an inpatient for three weeks and then take a 10 day break at home to let my white blood cells regenerate and then I would do that cycle for eight rounds of chemo. So in my first round, I, um, I'm in the hospital room and they're prepping me to put the port in. And they also put a little port here on my head. I don't know if you can see that little scar, but it was to do prophylactic treatment to the brain. They said that my type of tumor metastasizes to the brain. They wanted to just to prevent anything from happening since I was so young. So then the nurse walks into the room and she introduces herself and she said, her name is Esperanto. I said, wow, that's a very unique name. And she was very friendly and very bubbly and very outgoing. And then she goes, she looked at me and she looked at my wife and she's like, well, I feel like I know you guys from somewhere. I said, no, I've never seen you before. She's like, where do you go grocery shopping? So I told her, she's like, no, not there. She's like, where do you work? So I told her, she's like, no, not there either. And then she kept going down the list of things and she's like, where were you last Sabbath? And I said, I was at my church. And she goes, that's where I know you from. She goes, I was in the choir when you were sharing your testimony for them to pray for you. I was like, wow, what a small world, you know? So she says, well, I just want to let you know that um, when I asked her that, that her name was very unique. And she says, my name means hope. And I said, well, I kind of thought so. I said, because it's very similar to Spanish. And in Spanish, the word for hope is esperanza. And her name was Esperanto. So I just felt that God orchestrated all these things behind the scenes so that um, I would be reassured that I was going to be in the best of care, that my nurse, whose name was Hope, was taking care of me. <laughs> that was such a positive, um, positive way to start my, my journey of faith. So shortly after my, uh, my first round of chemo, uh, my doctor ordered another CAT scan just to see how my body was responding. And he says, Rick, I have great news. And I thought he was gonna share the score from the game on TV. He's like, no, no, the good news is about you. And I said, what is it? And he says, your tumor is completely gone. And mind you, it was huge. It was the size of my fist in my chest, if you can picture that. And that's why I was so short of breath. And he said, um, I never in my career have I seen such a remarkable reaction and a response to the radiation, to the chemotherapy. So um, he's, I don't know what's going on, but I know there must be some divine intervention. I said, 100%. I said, there are people praying for me all across the country and even internationally. We have prayer chains going, my family. And I just felt so um, encouraged and uplifted by those people who were putting me out there before the throne of God for healing. So um, I was so happy, but he said that um, because my tumor was so aggressive, he recommended that I stay on the medical protocol and finish my course of treatment. So of course, me being the compliant patient, I, I stayed on for three more rounds of chemo, but then I got progressively very, very ill. I lost all my hair, even my eyebrows, my nail beds became very dark. I became very gaunt. I had bags under my eyes and I had like that gray pallor color to my cheeks. So I lost over 22 pounds and I just was a shadow of my former, former self. So you can imagine what that does to your psyche, just seeing yourself deteriorate so rapidly. But I really felt that um, I needed to do something to boost my immune system and to, to, get, to gain some energy. I was so weak 
that I couldn't even feed myself. So my wife and daughter would take turns and they would literally come into the hospital room and feed me with the spoon because I couldn't even lift it up. I was just laying in the bed kind of out of it under so much medication. So during that time, my brother who was in Chicago and uh, going through his own journey with his brain tumor, he says, Rick, I want to recommend a place that I went to in South Florida in West Palm Beach. It's a health institute. And uh, I really had such a great experience there. And they teach you like how to be holistic and how to um, lead a vibrant life. And that sounded like a beautiful concept, but I work in the medical field. And this is all that I've been trained to do is surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. So I was a little bit skeptical at first. He says, Rick, I want you to pray about it. And I want you, I want you to register on faith. And when he said that, I thought he was just speaking like some foreign language. Like, what does that mean to register on faith? But I felt like God was speaking to me through my brother. So I said, okay, okay, I'll call them. So here's another short story for you is that um, when you go, when you check yourself out of the hospital and you seek alternative treatments, you know, it's not covered by medical insurance. So you're totally on your own. So when I called to register, I asked them the price and it was astronomical. And I'm thinking to myself, it's never going to happen. It was over $5,000 at the time. And they asked me if I was on chemotherapy. And I said that I was, I said, well, we want you to detox for uh, the next month before you come on site. So we want you to have um, no fried food, no meat, no dairy products, no processed sugar, drink plenty of water. And she came, went down the whole list of what things to do. I said, okay, I'm willing to do that, you know, just to, to, to boost my immune system. So then, um, Price was not an issue. And she said that I could, I could pay uh, a deposit in two weeks. And then I could pay the final balance when I arrive on site in October of that year. So then uh, my wife and I just looked at each other like, what are we going to do now? My brother said to register on faith. And we have no additional funds for this because as you imagine, our medical bills were sky high with all of my, with all my treatments. So we prayed again and the Lord gave us the idea to uh, do a sponsor letter and we wrote like a one page synopsis, very brief of my diagnosis, what had happened and that my tumor was responding and that I was gonna seek alternative treatments. And that now um, I needed some sponsorship to be able to fulfill that. And um, on that Sabbath, I couldn't go to church because my immune system was so suppressed. I was wearing a mask, just like we are doing now during COVID, but this was 12 years ago. So it's just that I couldn't be around people. So the doctor said that um, you need to protect yourself and you cannot be around people. So I couldn't go to church. So we decided to ask my best friend to read the letter in front of the congregation and that we would get the message out that way. So sure enough, he was, he was kind of shy. He didn't want to do it. He goes, but Rick, I'll do it for you. So he went up there and later he told me that the response was overwhelming and that people again, we're crying to hear the information and that um, that it was a positive thing. So then he called my wife and says, people are gonna come and they're gonna visit you and they want they want to help Rick. So my wife, um, at the time, our, our living room overlooked the front of the house and I was able to sit on the sofa there in my pajamas and look out the front window. And I could see all these cars pulling up in our driveway on Sabbath afternoon and people were putting envelopes in our mailbox. And some people even were bold enough to um, ring the doorbell and come inside and go, Rick, we just wanted to see you and let you know that we're praying for you. And they put cash or envelopes on the, on the, on the living room table. And within a two week period, we were able to raise over $5,000. So I know that was another miracle that God performed in our lives to allow me to be able to go to the Health Institute and learn about um, healthy living, just like you guys are living well <laughs> in the podcast. So um, one, one thing that really uh, set everything apart for me was the encouragement that I received. And we have a prayer warrior that sent me this Bible verse, which became my motto during my time in the hospital. And it was, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
And that's found in Isaiah 41.10. And I told my wife, can you please print that out and put it over my headboard in the hospital? And every morning I would look at that and I would walk around with my IV pole and, you know, bald headed and with my sweatshirt on. And I didn't feel like walking, but the nurse says, you got to stay active. You got to, you got to keep moving, you know? And that verse gave me hope. And I knew that Jesus was with me. So uh, in addition to that, I got tons of cards and emails and my wife did aromatherapy in my hospital room with eucalyptus and lavender and all these wonderful scents. And the nurses loved coming in the room because they said it felt like a spa in there. <laughs> so all those little things kind of add up. And even um, there was a guy who played the guitar and he came and did music ministry to me. And he says, Rick, you can pick any song you want and I'll sing it to you. So he just uplifted my spirits and all these things together just really made me feel like a whole person, like I wasn't just a patient. And there was one person in particular, um, she was the housekeeper, her name was Lolita, and she would come in, we had never met before, and she would come into my hospital room, and she was like a ray of sunshine, and she goes, good morning, Brother Rick, and she was like, you're going to have a great day, and I was like, oh, I don't feel like it, <laughs> but she would just encourage me every day, she'd open the blinds, let the sun in, and in the course of our conversation, she, she found out that I was a Christian and that I kept the Sabbath and she would write on my dry erase board, happy Sabbath. And that just meant the world to me because I was not able to go to church at that time. So all those things together just really boosted my morale and gave me hope for the future. So just to fast forward, um, I was able to register and go to the life transformation course at the Health Institute. And that's where I learned about all these life-giving properties. I learned about the benefits of wheatgrass shots. I learned about green, drinking green juice. I learned about eating a raw living foods diet, about exercising, about having a colonic, um, about infrared saunas to help you detox your system. I went to a mineral pool. These were outdoor pools and one was very, very hot. And then you would have to plunge yourself in a very, very cold pool seven times to like shock your system and let the impurities come out. So they were trying to detox me from the chemotherapy. I also did rebounding. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with what that is, but it's like a mini trampoline and you bounce up and down. And um, I was listening to a previous podcast of yours that you had, Dr. Dr. Um, Sankey. You had on there, your guest was David McLean. And he talked about being fit over 40. And he mentioned about, we have to keep our body movement, body moving. And he's absolutely right because especially my type of cancer was in my lymph system and your lymph only moves if you move. It's not like your circulatory system that your, your heart pumps the blood. This one, you, your lymph only moves if you are moving. So it's important for me to do that, that repetitive bouncing movement. I do it like for 10 minutes a day. And that kind of sets the tone for my day and it, it gets me warm, it gets my circulation going and I feel ready. I feel ready for the day and ready for work. So um, after two weeks of being at the Health Institute, drinking these green juices and eating these raw living foods, I had never heard of some of these sprouts. They were like azuki bean sprouts and mung bean sprouts and lentil sprouts and every kind of sprout you can imagine. And they had a huge buffet of vegetables and leafy greens like kale and spinach. And it was just something that I had never seen in such a grand scale before. It was unlike any other salad I've ever had. And then the physician on, on staff there prescribed me, if you can believe this, an avocado per meal. <laughs> and he said that he wanted me to gain weight and this were healthy fats and this was okay for me to do. So I just welcomed that and I savored the avocado and I just loved every, every minute of eating these beautiful nutritious foods. So within two weeks, my energy level increased and I was able to go to the swimming pool and do water aerobics in the class. I did rebounding class. I even did some, some minor weightlifting and I felt like life was coming back into my body. And even some of the classmates says, oh, your hair is starting to sprout. <laughs> and my wife said I was like a little chia pet because it was coming, it was coming like a little chick. <laughs> and she used to rub her head on my head. So uh, I just noticed that it was working. And they said that I will be detoxing over 60% of the toxins in my lifetime during this two week period that I would be at the Health Institute. So I was so happy that uh, things were taking a turn for the better. And I wanted to continue this program when I got home. So they have what's called a take home program where they equip you for success. 
and um, they tell you what is needed. You need to get a juicer, you need to get a blender. So my brother was so nice and um, he gifted us our first juicer that I still use to this day, my Omega juicer. And that's how I'm able to make my fresh squeezed juices and my wheatgrass shots. And then uh, for Christmas that year, my wife and my daughter bought me my Vitamix blender, which I'd make my smoothies. We make our salad dressings and we make a, a plethora of things in there that I use on a daily basis. And um, I just saw how well my body responded to drinking foods and eating foods that were full of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And in my situation, every calorie counted. So I wanted to make to maximize that. So I kept on with the program, even though I graduated from the Health Institute. I wanted to take these principles, these health principles, into my daily life because I felt that I wanted to be disease free and cancer free for the rest of my life. So coming back into my new lifestyle, um, I, I thought it was important to not only change my diet, but just change everything about my lifestyle. I learned the importance of being present in the moment. And when you're having a meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's important to just give thanks to the Lord and just be one with your meal because the Lord provided this for you and it's, it's from the earth. And you want to just give thanks to God, which I always used to pray before, but now I saw it in a whole new light because I saw that my life depended on these healthy nutrients going into my body. I also um, learned that we shouldn't be distracted while we're eating for proper digestion. And before, you know, I could see myself easily watching television when I'm eating. And now I just focused on my meal and having a nice, calm conversation with my family and just everything took on a whole new look. We went to the pantry and we kind of cleaned out all the processed foods and things that were not going to benefit us. And we just really tried to change everything. Uh, my deodorant, our laundry detergent, uh, the shampoo, the soaps that we used, everything wanted to be natural and organic because we didn't want any chemicals or pesticides. Everything we bought was organic. A little bit more expensive, but well worth it if you know it's for your health. It's, it's priceless, actually. So when I got home from the Health Institute, um, my wife was a teacher, as I have alluded to before, and she had her preschool kids make me a banner saying, welcome home, dad. And they put all their little handprints on it. And that just brought me to tears. And my daughter was there with balloons. And they said that I look radiant and that I look so happy and that like, I had been on vacation on the Riviera. And I was not tan. It was just because I had color back in my cheeks because all these nutrients were flooding my body. And I just had, you know, uh, like health all over, all over my body. So I was so happy. So then I, I had an appointment to see my medical oncologist, which is the one who gave me the chemotherapy, exactly one month from when I started at the Health Institute. And he saw me walking down the hall. And he's like, Rick, you look like the perfect picture of health. I can tell just by looking at you that whatever you're doing is working because you look radiant. And he goes, but if you don't mind, he goes, I'd like to do a blood test just to confirm what I see on the outside. He goes, you have come back to life. I said, by all means, I want to know as well that everything is good. So they did the blood test and the results came back and they said, these, these words are like music to my ears. And it says no evidence of disease. So I knew that God had cured me, that he had performed a miracle and staged me and healed me from stage four cancer. So I'm forever grateful for that. So things took a turn that I never thought because I used to be kind of a shyer person and you would never know that now with me talking 100 miles an hour. <laughs> but God has given me a new lease on life and I wake up every morning so thankful and so grateful. And I think that's part of the journey of faith, right? And I'm speaking to all of you listening that when we open our eyes in the morning, that's a gift that God has given us to breathe. And for me, breathing was an issue because that's where my cancer affected me, that I couldn't breathe. My lung was full of fluids. So every breath that I took freely just gave me vitality and energy for the day. And I would just thank you, Lord, that I'm able to live and I'm able to give back. So um, God gave me new opportunities. And I said, I said in the hospital, I said, Lord, if you heal me, I will testify any opportunity that I get to tell people how you healed me and how you changed my life. And that's exactly what the Lord gave me the opportunity to do. And I was invited and uh, so my cancer happened in 2012. And then in 2013 was the American Cancer Society Relay for Life event. 
And through some connections that I have, they asked me to be the keynote speaker for the event. And this is over like 500 people that gather together in Ormond Beach, Florida. And they um, gather all the cancer survivors there. And I was able to give them like a brief synopsis of my journey and inspire them. And they had me lead the survivor walk. And they gave me this beautiful medallion to wear. And my color is uh, purple for the lymphoma. So it was a purple ribbon. And I kind of felt like I was an Olympic gold medalist because I had given, I've been given a new lease on life. And we locked arms with our friends and my wife and we walked the entire circle of the stadium. And it was the most joyous moment of my life because I was alive. And I know that God gave me this opportunity to testify what he did in my life. And many people in the audience were not Christian and they were clapping and they were saying amen. And they just felt my positive energy coming right at them. Uh, after that, um, we were asked by the local newspaper, they were doing, this was in the year 2014, to, they were doing a feature for Valentine's Day on couples facing adversity. And they titled, they titled it In Sickness and in Health. And it was supposed to be for one of my patients, but my staff kept saying, Rick, Rick, you gotta tell them your story. I'm like, no, it's not about me, it's about my patient. They said, no, no, but they could do it together. And that's exactly what they did. So they interviewed my patient and his wife and myself and my wife, and they did a two page color spread in the newspaper for Valentine's Day about our love and how our love grew stronger. And it was just a beautiful way to share what God did in our life. They also interviewed us for the 2014 issue of the Southern Tidings magazine. And I'm not sure if you received that magazine in your area, but we were also featured in there, another two page spread. And uh, we were able to uh, reach so many people that way with, with what God did in my life. Um, even at the Health Institute that I went to, they did a survivor issue and they asked me to share my story and mind you, this is a secular place, but God gave, when God heals you, you know, heals you for a purpose. Because I was able to testify. I talked about my faith and how uh, we prayed and people were praying for me. And it's just amazing how God opened that door and they did not edit my article at all. They printed it exactly how I, how I said it. So I just praise God for that opportunity to witness for him again. And that magazine is called Healing Our World. And it's a worldwide publication, and many people have read it across the world, so I'm thankful for that as well. Later, I became a certified health coach, and I figured that I want to be able to help other people. So in the process, uh, my best friend that uh, read the, the sponsor letter at church, his wife also happened to be um, a, a personal trainer, and she had a goal. She said that I inspired her when they came to visit me in the hospital because she was going to do a triathlon. And that's where you do um, like swimming, bicycle riding, and running. Uh, it's a triathlon. And uh, she said that um, she wanted to run racing for Ricky. So she put a little sign on her back and she was able, and people can say, who's Ricky? <laughs> and she goes like, oh, it's my best friend. It's my husband's best friend. And he's in the hospital right now. And he could use a little encouragement. So we're racing for Ricky. So she kept getting uh, people blowing the horn or uh, waving their hands at her. And that made me feel so good that even though I couldn't go to support her in person, that they were thinking of me. So to fast forward a year from then, she decided to, um, make a livid list, which is much different than a bucket list, because when people heal that they hear that they have a terminal illness, they make a bucket list of things they want to do before they die. But she turned it around into a positive And she says, I'm going to make a livid list. I want I don't want to wait till I get a diagnosis to do the things that I've always wanted to do to travel and to do things with my family. So one of her goals, her lifetime goals was to ride her bicycle across America before the age of 50. So she did exactly that. She planned it in advance and she got seven other people to join her. And uh, she did it for the cause of the wounded veterans of America. And they plotted out their whole graph across the United States through the through from California to the Rocky Mountains, all the way through Oklahoma, down to Missouri, Alabama, and ended up in Amelia Island in Florida. 
So I was there on that day because I was already a year after recovery and I was able to join her at the finish line. And it was such an honor to be there to see her accomplish her goal and that I was an inspiration for that. So then fast forward a year from that in 2015, she decides to write a book about her journey across America and she dedicated the whole forward section to my health journey. And uh, if you wanna read about it, it's on Amazon. It's called Live It by Tracy Draper. So that was another highlight. And uh, so then from there, um, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I feel the Lord strongly impressing upon my heart to give back to the community. All this knowledge that we've been giving and the lifestyle that we now lead, we need to tell other people about it because it's life changing. So we decided to join the local farmer's market in our area. And we set up a little 10 by 10 tent there. And I had my juicer, I had my Vitamix blender and I had my centrifugal juicer and I started juicing for the community. And people would come by and they would look at these green juices and they're like, what is that? <laughs> but some people were genuinely interested and uh, we got to build a rapport with the community and we built some long lasting friendships. So then after several weeks of doing that, my wife said, you know, something's missing. And I'm like, no, honey, everything's fine. I got my juicers, I got my extension cord. We got the tent. She's like, she's, I don't mean the physical. She's, I mean the spiritual. She goes, you're not here just to sell juices. You're here because God healed you and you need to testify about that somehow. And I thought about it and she's absolutely right. So then um, we decided to uh, print a color copy of my article that I had written for the Health Institute and we had it laminated and I Velcroed it to the tent at the farmer's market. And that was my first time putting it up there and being bold about my faith. And I was kind of nervous because, you know, when you put your story out there, you don't know how people are going to react. And I noticed that this gentleman came by and he stopped and he started reading the article. And I'm juicing for another customer, but I could see him out of the corner of my eye. And I was kind of like inside of my butterflies were going. I was like, what's happening, God, you know? And then um, he left. And then he came back and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. I know you're busy. He goes, but I'm looking for Rick Perez. And I said, I'm Rick Perez. He's like, no way. He's like, is that you in the picture? He goes, you look totally well. You look so healthy. I said, wow, that's the power of God. I said, when he restores your health, he restores it completely. You don't read in the Bible that when he when um, he healed the blind man, that he needs glasses in the next chapter, right? And when he healed the lame, that he needs a, a cane in the next chapter. No, when he was leaping and jumping for joy, right? So when God heals, he heals you completely. He says, well, I'm here because we are a singing ministry and we travel across the country. We're a family. And uh, my wife was diagnosed with a breast cancer. And she read online that wheatgrass is really good for um, cancer patients, is really good in phytonutrients. It's good, has a complete um, amino cell chain in it. And it's a complete protein. And he goes, and I just walked by your booth and I just realized that you're selling wheatgrass. I said, yes, but I only have enough to do a shot. I don't have enough to give her. He's like, you know what? The Lord led me here. He goes, I'm gonna pay you in advance. And he just opened his wallet and threw $20 on my table. I said, sir, what are you doing? You don't even know me. He's like, no, I trust you because the fact that the Lord healed you and the Lord brought me here, I know that this was meant to be. So after that, I went home and I was able to grow some more wheatgrass at home and I met them at their house and we established a long lasting friendship. And they had a daughter about the same age as our daughter and they got to become friends. And we just have, we've been friends ever since. So I just see how the Lord works because I was willing to put myself out there and my faith. The Lord brought new friends into our life and I was able to share that journey with them. So then um, from there, we decided to kind of incorporate this into a business because it was really taken off and we called it Rick's Verde Greens. So you could look me up on Facebook and on Instagram and I have lots of recipes for juicing and um, vegan recipes, plant-based recipes. So my wife thought it'd be a good idea to name it um, kind of a nod to our Spanish heritage. So Rick is my name and Verde means green in Spanish and green, of course. So Rick's Verde Greens, which translates to Rick's Greens Greens. <laughs> so I just wanted to let people know that it was the greens that's given me the vitality, thanks to the Lord. So um, since then, I've been able to conduct health seminars, We've traveled, we've given juicing demonstrations. 
um, either as a presentation format with you know a big uh, audience, or I do it one-on-one -on -one with clients. I've also been interviewed for a three-part series uh, called The Love Shaped Life, and you can look that up on YouTube as well. And it gives you the whole story. I'm just kind of giving you the highlights today because we're almost out of time. And so now I do uh, juice cleanses for people. I help them with detox. And some people um, just want to maybe lose weight or they're living a hectic lifestyle and they just want to have more energy or they want to just detox because of all the, the germs that they're exposed to on a daily basis. But I also work with cancer patients like, like myself in the past. And I'll be able to encourage them because I've been through it myself and I know what it's like to be on their other side. I know what it's like to be wearing a mask to have lost all my hair, to be seen as like, you're not a valid part of society anymore. And I wanna I want to let my patients know that I see them, I connect with them on eye, eye to eye, and I value them and they're important to me because they're important to God. And he sees all of his children, no matter if you're in the hospital with a mask on or whether you're bald, whatever the circumstance, God sees you. So looking, um, so but one more thing is that, um, I saw the importance of, that I learned of keeping your body alkaline and to be disease free. And we know that um, when your alkaline is 7.0 or higher, and if you do things that are uh, acidic, it's like things like soda, meat, caffeine, those are all the things that kind of tax your system and it weakens you. So you wanna eat things that are on the alkaline spectrum like fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, seeds, all those things that bring life and vitality into your body, just like God prescribed in Genesis to Adam and Eve. So these things took on a whole new meaning to me as I was doing this on a daily basis, and I was a living result of God's diet. So now I exercise daily. Um, there's a bridge. We live close to the beach here. We live on the mainland side, and there's this huge bridge that we cross over to go to the beach side. And it was my goal when I got home from the hospital to walk that bridge and at first I can only go halfway up and I was like I was winded I could hardly I could hardly breathe my wife says keep on she goes next week we're going to try a little bit further and every week we would go together and we would press the Lord help me today to make it a little further then we went three-fourths way across the bridge and I had to go back and then about three weeks later I was able to go all the way across one side until I got so good about two months later I was able to go across both sides of the bridge front and back and I was even jogging at this point. So I knew that God was expanding my lungs and expanding my health to new heights. So it's such a beautiful thing when you have that support system from your spouse and also that God is showing you new ways, right? Uh, my blood pressure is very good. When I go to the doctor, they say everything is just so perfect that they go, what do you do? And I said, I juice, you know? So I know that juicing is the key to optimal health. And they asked me, what medications are you currently taking? And the nurse is ready to type in all of my medications. I said, none. She's like, you're kidding me, right? I said, no, I'm not kidding. I take no over-the-counter medication, no prescription medication. I just do juice and I take supplements. That's it. And they just look at me like in disbelief, but I am living proof that, that this diet works, right? So I, I see looking back now to wrap things up, I see that God's hand was in my life from the beginning. And most people would have seen this as a negative thing, being diagnosed with cancer. You kind of get like a life sentence, like life is over. But for me, it was the exact opposite. I began living. I began living with hope for the future. And I allowed God to take over. And I let go of myself, of my pride, of who I was. And I allowed God to transform me from the inside out. And I think of that verse in the Bible in Genesis 50, 20, that says, you meant evil against me but God meant it for good in order to bring about it as it is today to save many people alive. And we know that's the story of Joseph, right? When God had ordained him to save his family from the famine. But if we look about it in our life, we can be instruments of God as well. And he could use us to help other people. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm joyful now. I'm always smiling. And our pastor says, I'm one of the happiest people that he knows. So I'm always smiling and I'm always shaking everybody's hand and giving people hugs. And I just feel that inside, I'm just so happy because I'm alive and that God's given me an opportunity to um, a second chance at life. You know, I feel like kind of like Lazarus, you know, we, we never hear in the Bible, 
what Lazarus thought or felt after he came out of the grave. But I kind of feel like a modern day Lazarus that I was given an opportunity to live again and to um, help other people and help them stay healthy and strong. Um, I wanna make each and every day count. And I feel such a peace within my soul knowing that I serve a living God. You know, we always hear these Bible stories of how God helped so-and-so or he helped Moses or Joseph or David in the Bible or, or the prophet Daniel. And these are great stories, but they're in the Old Testament, you know? And then we hear about the miracles Jesus performed in the New Testament. But we don't hear about many things happening now in 2024. And I'm just so grateful that through my experience and my journey that I know what it's like to be a recipient of one of God's miracles. And I just feel so grateful. So I decided to create a positive affirmation. I had read that if you create a positive affirmation and you recite it daily, that when you speak it audibly, your cells and your body respond favorably and you start to believe it. So I'm gonna share it with you in closing and then I'll open it up for any questions that you may have. And this is the positive affirmation that I say every morning when I drink my green juice or uh, drink my wheatgrass shots. So I say, I am blessed, I am healthy, I am strong. I'm getting better and better every day in every way in Jesus name, amen. And at first, when I would first recite that, I was not healthy, I was not feeling strong and I was spiritually depleted. But the more I said it, the more I started to believe it, and the more I embodied those principles. So I, I picked things that I wanted to be. And little by little, I became those things. I became blessed by God. I became healthy in my body and strong in my spirit and strong physically. So I just wanted to share that with you. And hopefully you'll be able to create your own positive affirmation, maybe of three things that you want to be in the future and how you see yourself being victorious in Jesus Christ. So thank you again for the opportunity to share my testimony and hopefully it inspired you in whatever you're going through to trust in God, to increase your faith and to be victorious in Jesus. Amen. Brother Rick, thank you so much for such a powerful testimony of the mighty God whom we serve. Amen. I am just going to go ahead and open it up for if anyone has questions for Brother Perez. Feel free to open your mic and ask him any questions that you may have. Hello, My goodness. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Is somebody? Yes. Um, Brother Perez, this is Emlyn. I am so, <laughs> your testimony just inspired me over and over again. Amen. I just want to give God thanks for his blessings, for his promises that he said that if we ask, he is faithful and he will give us the things that we need. And you ask God for healing and God healed you. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. You know, my mantra is give the body what it needs. And the innate intelligence of the body will know exactly what to do with it. God has created, created, you know, you know, vegetables, fruits, nuts, grains, vegetables. He said that in his word. And that is what he wants us to do. And I am just ecstatic to see that by you following his plan, that he was able to heal you. Now, people often say, you know, I heard you talk about eating organic, you know, foods that are organic. Yes. Now, what I've had people say to me, you know, why buy organic food? You cannot trust, you know, what you buy in the store because you don't know if it's organic. They might say it's organic, but it's not organic. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to someone when they say something like that? Because um, I do believe that, you know, there are certain foods that you must buy organic. So how do you respond to someone when they ask you a question like that? That's a very good question. And that's a question that I get quite often, actually. So thank you, Emmeline, for asking that. Um, I say that I actually used to work at a health food store before as well. And mm -hmm. when the um, produce comes and there's a little sticker on it, the organic produce always has a little number nine in front of the number. So you can verify that it is organic and there's strict standards for them to produce that it has to be a no pesticides and no fertilizer. So you know that you're getting a quality product. And I tested it myself. I bought like a regular cucumber versus a um, organic cucumber. And the regular cucumber lasts almost like a week and a half in the fridge. And the organic one 
since it has no fertilizer or pesticide, it like in two days, it's already getting moldy. So I know that it's very fresh and it's very fragile. So you wanna eat it at the peak of freshness and you wanna put those nutrients in your body. So you don't need to keep it in your fridge, but you wanna put all those nutrients in your body and eat the healthiest way you want. Thank you, yeah, yeah. I did something like that with my kids when I was homeschooling them. I went to a regular grocery store, bought a potato, went to the health food store, bought an organic um, potato and the organic potato starts sprouting <laughs> in a couple of days. The the um, potato that I bought from the regular store, it took days before, maybe even weeks before it started sprouting. That's right. So 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 I'm glad you um that you found the same thing that people ask these questions because they don't believe that actually there is um, organic foods out there that are really organic. There are companies that that's all they do. They produce organic produce. Right. And we yeah. really need to start looking at those dirty dozen foods right. that we should buy organic because we're putting these chemicals into our bodies and causing um, you know right. other complications when we do that. So and, and espe especially like the berries, like the strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, they're heavily um, sprayed. And even if you wash them at home, it gets into the little crevices and it's already in the inside the fruit. It's already a part of the, the growth process of the fruit. So you're still ingesting it, even if you wash it externally. So that's a very good point, Emily Lynn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Leno has to hand up. Go ahead, Leno. I had a question. Thank you so much. That was really, really good. Amen. I wanted to ask, um, what was the name of the institute? Because I have a friend who I think is going to need something like that. Perfect. Yes. It's called the Hippocrates, Hippocrates Health Institute in West Palm okay. Beach. So it's, a, it's a, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because it's a secular um, health institute, but people go there from all over the world. Even celebrities go there. And um the Lord gave me an opportunity, even when I did my graduation, everyone was going up and they were sharing their experience of how they enjoyed the facilities and being on the grounds. And it's very picturesque there. They have like little koi ponds and little cobblestone paths and there's beautiful orchids blooming everywhere and little wind chimes. And it's just a very healing environment. But yes. I noticed everybody who got up to speak, they were just um, thankful to the directors or thanking their family and members, but nobody thanked God. So when I got up, I said, Lord, give me the words, help me to think of something quick to, to say. And the verse that came to my mind, Lenore, was um, the verse from Matthew that says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find and knock and the door shall be open to you. And I was able to share that, that because I asked the Lord for wisdom, he directed me to this place and I was seeking proper nutrition and I found it here at the Health Institute and I knocked on the door of faith and the Lord gave me faith to continue on and not to give up. So then everybody, everybody was clapping and I was like, wow, like I didn't expect that reaction. But when you are bold enough to testify for God, he just turns everything around and people are receptive and they're open because they see they see something that is something foreign to them that is the, the that is the power of God at work in your life. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another question. Yes. Um, is you said your story was in Southern Tidings. Yes. Is it anywhere else? Because I'd like to send it to my friend. Yes. Um, maybe later I could communicate with um Jennifer and I could give okay. you and I could send it to you as an email. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciated it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I know, Lenore, Lenore, if you can you no, no, yeah, I, yeah, I have information here. Okay. All right. Can you my email address? You can also go visit because they have, I think, two or twice a year that hypocrisy. They have like an open house That's that right. people okay. can go and visit. Rick is are they still doing that? They are, yes. As a matter of fact, we we went we went back for my 10-year anniversary. 
And yeah. I got to show my family the beautiful grounds and we got to eat the healthy buffet and they were they were so impressed. And it didn't come from me, but this were their exact words, like, Dad, such a healing environment. I go, that's exactly how I felt when I was there, you know. So I knew that what I felt was the true emotion because that's exactly what they felt as well. I can give okay. you my email. It's um R Perez2919 at gmail.com. And you okay. can reach out to me personally, and I can send you more information of okay. my articles and um, healthy lifestyle, and we can go on from there. <laughs> okay, R. Perez 2919? Yeah, R. Perez 2919 at gmail.com. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Lenore. I wish I could see everyone's faces. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should put my face up. <laughs> yes. I like, I like to put a face with the name. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm high. Hey. God bless you. Thank I you. Love, I love your positive smile. <laughs> <laughs> and Emmeline too. Any Beautiful. other questions for Brother Press? Yeah, someone is asking in the chat, what are the greens that you juice? The greens? Oh yes, I do uh, different combinations, but my my main one is a, a one cucumber, like five stalks of celery, one lemon a little nib of ginger, a green apple, some cilantro, which helps you detox from heavy metals. And also I put a handful of kale and spinach in there. And it's very potent, but I, my body actually craves it. And when I don't have my juice any particular day, if I'm in a rush or something, I notice by 10 o'clock in the morning, I crash. But when I juice, I'm good until lunchtime because I have lots of energy running through. I'm, my, my cheeks get kind of flush and I, I just feel like the life giving properties. And this is my wife on the other line there. <laughs> she's waving at you now. So she's able to testify for that too. Honey, did you want to say anything? Did you want to add anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, she, she's coming over. <laughs> yeah. Brother Rick, can you go over what you said you juice again, please? Yeah, so my green juice is a one cucumber, five stalks of celery, one lemon, one nib of ginger. It's like the, like the tip of your finger, like a small. And then um, a green apple. Of course, everything's organic. Uh, a handful of kale, a little bit of a few branches of cilantro, and you could throw in a little spinach as well. So a handful of kale and spinach. Yes. Yeah, um, cilantro. So I had a lemon, question. I'm sorry. You juice the lemon, I'm sorry. You juice the lemon whole with the skin and everything, seeds, everything? Yeah, so I, I did my research on that. And uh, for lemons, it's okay to include the rind. But if you're including an orange, they say it's best not to include it because it has de detrimental properties. Mm -hmm. and, the same th and the same thing with an apple. Some people um, core the seeds out. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but I try to always do what's suggested and what I learned at the Health Institute. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I Let had a question about, question. yeah, I had a question about celery. That's one of the dirty foods, um, okay. but is the organic one okay, I guess, or is better than nothing or what? No, the organic is, is perfect, yes. And, okay. Um, it, it, uh, it also gives it a lot of the flavoring and we know that cucumber and celery are very have a high water content. Mm -hmm. Most of your juice comes from those two vegetables alone. Everything else is like for flavor and for detoxing. But my, my wife has joined us. So did you want to yeah. say anything? Oh, yeah. no, I was just listening to your que the questions that you all are so sweet and so kind to um, allow Rick to share his testimony. You know, every time, I mean, I've lived it with him, right? <laughs> and I've been hearing it. I get inspired all over again. <laughs> So yeah. it is a blessing. It goes both ways, you know, and what I wanted to add to all of this is when you purchase your, your vegetables, your fruits, hopefully organic, you know, we still wash them very well. And after everything, there's the power of prayer. Prayer. Pray over your juice, Amen. you know, mm -hmm. and the Lord will bless it, right? Yeah. As it's yeah. new, giving nutrients to mm -hmm. your body. And, yeah. uh, you know, our job is to take care of this temple that he yeah. has given yeah. us so that we may be able to testify both ways, right? Mm -hmm. In our faith and also in the health message. And as we're talking, I'm so, oh, I'm drinking my lemon water with ginger. <laughs> That's so we're living it. 
Yes. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> what do you wash your um, vegetables with? Uh, we use um, a little organic spray that we buy at the, at the grocery store, at the health food store. But some people could just soak their vegetables in vinegar as well. Mm -hmm. That would work just water. as fine water. with vinegar and water. I'm sorry, yes. That's what but, I do. Yeah. yeah, so anything that's available to mm -hmm. you that, that you feel comfortable with. Um, but I just used a little spray because the vinegar has a little strong um, odor to it. And when I when I juice for my clients, I want, I want it to be very appealing to them and very palatable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be the best possible flavor. So I just kind of do it without the vinegar. But um, they always say, wow, these are delicious and they want more. And mm -hmm. I, I do like 12 juices at once. I, I bring them in a cooler and I have them do like four juices per day for three days. And they don't eat any meals for three days. They're doing a total detox. And they said they feel so so full of energy they feel the mental clarity they're able to go to the restroom on a regular basis i mean just their whole body like it resets their metabolism and i said i know that it works as because i've done it myself you know so i do it periodically myself as a fast but i do it regularly with meals on a daily basis just to keep my health up so there's more involved in the regimen when i was a cancer patient but now i just do it for maintenance just to be healthy and have vitality and uh just everyone that I talk to, I think the hardest thing that I put out there is that it's being consistent because, you know, we all get busy, right? We, we have pressures at work. We have deadlines to meet. Uh, we get caught up in the routine. And when you're tired, the least thing you want to do is get in front of a juicer and start pushing down some juices, uh, some vegetables. But as long as you prep ahead of time, I think that's the biggest key. So I couldn't do it without my wife. And she helps me to prep and we chop everything the night before we wash it. We put it in the fridge and the next morning it's ready to go. So all I do is take it out of the fridge and juice it. And within 30 minutes, I've already juiced, rinsed it and on my way to work. And I even make two juices. So I could take one in a mason jar and I could have it during my break. So I could have sustained energy throughout the day. And even my coworkers, they always look at me like, what is that green stuff you're drinking? And it smells so strong. I go, this is life-giving food. And they just, they don't, so I make, I make a little bit for them. I sample, oh, here, taste it. You're like, oh, it tastes pretty good. You know, so I guess don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So do you still do the, um, the, um, the lemon, not lemon, but the um, lime, the grass, the grass wheat. Gra the wheat, wheat grass wheat. Yes, I do. Wheat. And that, and that is, that is so potent. Uh, we just drink two ounces in the morning and even mm -hmm. my wife and I do it together. We do like a little, a little toast with our shot glasses. <laughs> But yeah. it's so powerful. They said it's the equivalent of eating 23 salads, all the nutrients that you're getting. So you imagine yeah. there's no humanly way possible that we could chew 23 salads. I can barely get through one salad, right? Yeah. So imagine all the nutrients that you're getting. And it's it's very, um, has like a sweet aftertaste to it. Mm -hmm. And I grew my own for the longest time, but then I started back working at the hospital and it got to be a little bit like taking over our kitchen, having all these sprouts growing everywhere. So I just let go of that. And now I just buy it at the health food store. I buy a pound at a time because I don't want it to go bad. And it lasts about a good week. Mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm able to juice about four handfuls. That makes about two ounces. And mm -hmm. I love the taste. It has, has a sweet aftertaste. And uh, some people, they feel it's a little bit strong for them. So they might do a chaser of a half a lemon or half an orange slice just to kind of take the edge off. But I take it straight and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a special juicer you need to do that. I yeah, so I use I yeah. use a um, a masticating juicer or no, also known as a cold press juicer. So it's just very gentle and it just kind of turns and squeezes the juice out of the vegetables and out of your leafy greens. Because if you were to put wheatgrass or spinach or kale into a centrifugal juicer, which is the one with the motor and the blade, it would just mm -hmm. clump up and it will produce heat, killing the enzymes. Okay. And you want the maximum bang for your buck, right? You wanna be able to get extract all the nutrients out of the vegetables, the organic vegetables that you bought and they're expensive. So you want every ounce counts, right? So I noticed also, I, I did an experiment that I use the same exact ingredients in the centrifugal <laughs> juicer and I put them in the omega juicer, which is my masticating juicer. And I got more juice out of the one that squeezes it because nothing mm -hmm. was wasted. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the centrifugal juicer, it grinds it so fast, 
it pushes out a lot of the pulp and then you're wasting a lot of mm. the nutrients. So I really think that that kind of juicer is the best way to go. Yeah. Okay, Stan and Yvette, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I, yeah, I guess I'll turn on my camera just for a minute. <laughs> uh, so thank you again for your your testimony. That was wonderful. I have uh, Stan and my mother. We and and our dog have been listening. So um, amen. I think you you answered the question, but uh, in the past we've used juicers, and that's exactly what took place. We would lose a lot of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you just made mention um, the omega juicer. Mm -hmm. Is that and that's the only one that you use? And then where can we purchase yes, they, that? Is um, that online? Is it on Amazon? Yeah. It's everywhere. You can order it online. You can order it on Amazon. Um, okay. I I purchased mine at the Health Institute because they sell them there at the store. Um, sure. You can get like a, a centrifugal juicer anywhere. You can get it at Walmart or Target, but um, the Omega ones are kind of a specialty juicer. And I, I have the Omega 860 is the model that I use. Okay. And um, it's very easy to clean and it's very easy to assemble and take it apart. And it's very quiet. You don't even hear it. And I, when I used to juice, um, when my, before my daughter got married, she was, I know you're juicing that. I could smell it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole house just smelled very fresh. Mm -hmm. and, um, when, I was at, when I was at Hippocrates, they had like a nursery there where they grew all their sprouts. And as soon as you walked in there, it was an oxygen rich environment. And then they said, take a deep breath. And I just did because it just felt just so fresh, fresh and so clean. So and I wanted to just inhale that as much as I could, but it was all the nutrients and uh, the green, you know, it happens to be my favorite color. And I don't know if you notice on the, the back wall of my office here is okay. the color green. <laughs> and it's a color of nature and all the fruits and vegetables grow on green plants or on green trees, right? So it just, God is so wise when he created the color palette of the world, the blue sky to be calming, like the blue shirt, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the things that are just in nature occurring naturally and how we as humans are interacting with nature is such a beautiful thing. So I'm just thankful for that knowledge and that I can connect with it in a very special way. Well, amen. God bless uh, you and your lovely family. So um, thank you so much. I'll be uh, looking into the Omega Juicer with the 860 then. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Any Somebody other told. questions? For yeah, I just had one more. Brother Perez, you said you take supplements. So what supplements do you take? Oh, sometimes I take magnesium. I take zinc. I try to supplement with the minerals because that's what's lacking in our current diet. Um, because the soil has been so depleted and iodine, I do some of that. Um, I try to take enzymes for digestion. And uh, when I was at the health Institute, they say that if you have a hard time swallowing the supplements, you could actually open up the capsule and just put it on your food. And as I looked at my plate, it started already um, working on the vegetables and they were kind of like disintegrating in front of my eyes. So I know that's what's happening mm -hmm. inside my body. It's helping me to digest the food and to absorb all the nutrients. So that's the main thing um, when you're a cancer patient is that you wanna absorb as many nutrients as possible and you don't wanna tax your system by digesting a heavy meal because it takes two hours for you to digest your meal and then for it to get into your bloodstream. Whereas when you juice, it's immediate. Within two to five minutes, it's already circulating in your system and it's bioavailable. That's why people say, well, why juice? You know, why, why not just eat an apple? I said, I love to eat apples and I do eat apples, but when I want an energy boost or I'm trying to keep my immune system, especially during COVID, I was juicing every day and I was making juices for my friends at work and I was trying to help people. I said, this is the way to do it. And I didn't get sick. You know, it's just amazing how you can just testify in your everyday life what God is doing for you. And it's so simple. People say it can't be that easy. And I said, well, I didn't think so either. I was skeptical too. I said, but I'm here 12 years later and I had stage four cancer and God healed me because he showed me that this is the way to do it is through eating a, a raw living foods, natural diet, plant-based. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I have, I have a question. Sure. Um, Brother Perez. Yes. How are your, what was your parents, what were, was their response when they found out 
that the Lord had healed you. Mm -hmm. They were so happy. They were overjoyed. Um, mm -hmm. There was an answer to prayer for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, they came uh, for two weeks during my, the beginning when I, when I told you that I was in the hospital during the first month. They came, yes. my they came from my birthday to cheer me up. But I was still getting hydration at that time. And I looked pretty bad. But you know how good God is. And I, I kind of didn't want them to see me. I didn't want them to see me looking that bad. But I said, yes. Lord, help them, help them to see beyond what they see physically. Mm -hmm. And when they came into the room, they looked at me with the eyes of love. And they looked at me as their son. And that to me was... Um, I saw a correlation of how God looks at us as his children. He doesn't mm -hmm. see the scars that, you know, of our bad life that we used to lead. He just says, wow, you're my child and I love you, you know, and it doesn't matter what scars or what we've been through, but uh, we have no lesser value in God's eyes. And that's the way my parents saw me and they hugged me and we're a very touchy feely family. And we're always, you know, hugging each other and caressing each other and giving lots of kisses. And um, that's so huge because you feel like, you're alive. You feel like you're a person that, you, you know, yeah, I don't take life for granted. And I want to be able secure. to, to just uh, feel the emotions. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a genuine person and I'm not sick anymore. That's powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for your questions. Yeah. Well, I've, I've totally enjoyed uh, talking to each yeah. of you and seeing your smiles. <laughs> And I am so glad receiving your emails if you want to reach out yeah. as well. I am so glad that you enjoy being with us because we are going to invite you back again. All right. All right. <laughs> wow. You have a lot to share with, you know, to our audience. I really, really enjoy tremendously to see because we have been talking about these different healing um, treatments that God has created for us. You know, fruits, nuts, grains, vegetables, eating a plant-based diet. Research after research have shown that a plant-based diet is the best diet, the best form of diet to be on that will ward off all these chronic diseases that we are facing today. It's right. And it's proven over and over again. But sometimes it's so hard for us to actually take the first step or we start and then we kind of fall off the wagon, you know. But it's... It is so, you know, so amazing to hear it from someone who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. That means the cancer spread from to other areas in the body already. And you were able to heal yourself with God's, you know, with nature. So it's so, so amazing. I, 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 just, I just want to conclude with, with one last statement. And is that I appreciate what, what Emma Lynn is saying, because it would be so much better in society if we were able to prevent disease instead of trying to treat it after the fact, because it's much Amen. better. So mm -hmm. I, I learned the hard way because I had to change after my diagnosis, mm -hmm. but you're getting the information ahead of time. Right. And God has given you this opportunity today to share it for yourself or for your spouse or for your children or for mm -hmm. your extended family or coworkers and neighbors. And you could be that light, that instrument that God's going to use to keep that ripple effect going to spread the health message. So yeah. an uh, ounce of prevention is worth everything. <laughs> yes, yes. The health message is the right arm of the gospel. I firmly yeah. believe that. It is so yeah. true. Well, thanks again, Brother Rick, for coming and sharing with us your testimony. We really enjoyed it tremendously. And we love to have you back where you can share more, uh, you know, your knowledge about, I would love to know more about mm -hmm. acid-based food, you know, how to balance that. Because I have learned over the, over the time that we need to keep our bodies alkaline. That's right. An alkaline body, diseases cannot grow. Okay. Acidic, that's when you start having problems. That's right. So... We need to learn the foods we need to eat to keep our bodies alkaline. Amen. So we would love to hear more about that. Yeah, maybe next oh. time I could do a juicing demonstration. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much. And your lovely wife behind it, you're smiling. You guys live in Ormond Beach, you said? We, we live now in Port Orange, which is about 20 minutes Port south Port of Port Orange. Yeah. yeah, my son used to live in Port Orange. He just yeah. moved to New Smyrna. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I know what Port Orange is. Williamson, Williamson. Yes. Williams. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Well, God, God oh. bless you all. And thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. Yeah. Thanks for coming. We, thank we enjoy it tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. It's been thank a blessing you. for us as well. <laughs> okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to stop the recording, pause, stop recording.